Uh, ooh. <laughs> now we're getting now we're cooking with gas. Better dice. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna need to buy some scrap I guess. I think some of those ships should be here or back pretty soon. Uh should I no I'm just gonna go eat and I'm gonna Sunday. Where are the ships? Oh they're already here. Uh, buy some scrap, unload containers. Uh, I'm gonna go buy some scrap. It's not too much, but <clears throat> it, it's not expensive, so that's cool. And I'm gonna need all of them. Okay, that's done. I can't buy anymore. Nope. Uh, Matsutake! Let's start that cooking! <clears throat> Pala, let's get some good eating in. Just a glass of Brio. Okay, we are stable. As much as I can, I'm not gonna let my stability fall at all. Like, I don't care. I'm gonna buy all of it. So, we have this working, we have this almost done. I'm gonna wait it a bit. Uh, so let's go help these guys because these are very troubling guys. I don't know what's gonna happen if I'm gonna get attacked. But someone comes to help you, blah blah blah. I don't tell them anything. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Oops, bug. Let's do it again. And I have two sixes for whatever is gonna happen next. I see you've been contributing. Haki stands next to you in the, uh, at the dust house window. I was unsure to expect uh, when we joined the flotilla on its voyage to the eye, but after the journey across the system, then the quarantine, and then the flux reaching all the way out here to. Haki stops herself. Thank you. She bows over here. The other ships have only been interested in sending us supplies, but we grow all we need. She just as a dust house. What dust houses need? That is the problem that concerns us. What dust houses need? That, okay, she smiles and says, Shall we go inside? Into the dust house? Where else? She taps away at the panel by the window. Seems only fair that after your help with the sis support systems, you get to see what it is that you are maintaining. Aki leads you to an opening besides the window. You pass through a dark, uh, changing room. You notice Aki is lighting on an oxygen mask and a visor. She looks at the swirling dust inside. In inside, it is just like amber step. Thin atmosphere, constant dust storms, nothing that will bother you. She passes your mask. The dust isn't exactly pleasant to inhale, however, so take this. You hold it to your face. She leads you through a short decontamination tunnel with its fuzz, uh, fizzling panels and purifying light and then through into the dust house. Immediately the wind and the heat hits you. You feel the rough waves of dust scattering across your face and peer through the amber's murk. Your feet slide on the shifting piles of sand. Welcome to the step, or an emulation of it at least. Aki's voice sounds distant, echoey. The terraforming process only managed to provide a limited atmosphere around the moon, one which is slowly escaping. It's been like that since I was born, so I got used to the idea. You catch her being uh, her bright eyes through the amber dust. So did everything else uh, so did everything else that lives there. You feel something hard beneath your feet, beneath the sand, like a coil of rope. What is under the sand? This is step silk. It's one of the plants we established in the step. She kicks away some red sand. Like any wait, like any bust fiber, it can be rattled uh, and woven into clothes. I'm wearing some made from it myself. It is one of many species adapted to the step since the Solheim collapse, which is why it must be preserved. She stares out into the swirling dust. It is as much, as much of a refugee as we are, and the dust houses hold hundreds of other species. 
Yaluka at the pale, unassuming root treaded thick deep in the sand. I think watches you silently. Had enough? It will be easier to speak outside. Anki leads you back out through the decontamination tunnel, which blasts the dust from both of you with a burst of metallic. Uh, wait, metallic tasting air? Uh, and into the changing room. Aki hangs up both the masks, patiently awaiting your questions. Why bring plants into now? Uh, what? What happened on Amber Step? Aki pauses, pulling her shawl around her. She looks small and pale inside its layers. Step was already a doomed world, she sniffs. When Solheim gave the terraforming contract to Cybele, they believed they could build an atmosphere. But the moon's erratic orbit made it impossible to maintain. By the time the Solheim collapsed, the atmosphere was already fading, and Cybele's attention was on Ember's heart. After the collapse, Cybele fell too. Its researchers scattered across the moons and any central organization lost. Since then, my parents' generation worked tirelessly to survive. To that, what we had to the for, uh, failing moon. The step silk, the other adapted species, are the life's work of the steps' colonies. So, when the flux started to collapse our computer systems, corrode and destroy our life support, our water supply, our agriculture, we had to leave. Aki sits heavily on a nearby bench. Soon, the only traces of the step will be on this ship. Aki begins to cry quietly. You're unsure what to do. Sit beside her. Yeah, that's comforting enough. You sit on the bench beside her and she sobs. You understand why the ship, why the refugee from the steppe are so different. Their world was already dying when the flux arrived. Ember Step is a terraformed moon, a partial atmosphere, established colonies, agriculture, and yet, when the flux event started, its people had to leave. You think of the eye and the delicate web of um, decaying systems it rests upon. What hope does a ruined station have against a wave that corrupts, corrodes, and collapses? Aki interrupts your thoughts, rubbing her eyes. Not everyone left. There wasn't room to take all the people and fill the dust houses. My parents, their friends, and many others stayed. She sniffs. We carry the step for them. You left people? Perhaps there is hope? We learned not to talk of hope on a dying world. There is meaning for them, and, they f uh, and any future they can build with the time they have. She stands up. I wanted you to understand the importance of these dust houses, of what they contain. She leads you back in, uh, out into the corridor. If the flux events continue to reach out uh, to the eye, we need to build protections to ensure their safety. Aki meets your eye. I can help. Aki smiles weakly. I knew it. You will be welcome. On the wind, slow shadow. I really wish. God damn it! This, this game is so fucking emotional! Ah! Mm. Fuck! How could you ride so well? God damn it, people! Fuck you! Oh, I'm tearing up! Oh. Calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down. You, you're a man, you're a man, you can do this. You can do this! Okay. These dust houses are already decaying. I have seen it. She stares into the dust. We had thought that they would last longer, but that that last flux event. Help us, Aki needs to, please. I will. When you are ready, we will begin the preparations for reinforcing the dust houses. We need to be ready for the next flux event. Aki's eyes shine with the la uh, last of her tears. Man, I'm a man, I'm a man. I can do this. I'm... She takes a breath. I will see you soon. Aki drifts away from the corridor, leaving you alone once more at the viewing window, watching the ragged, delicate traces of the moon known as Ember Step.
Okay, what do we do now? Uh, preservation. Uh, step silk care. Improving the dust houses isn't the only way to sustain the step silk. With intuitive care, the plant can be made more resistant. Cool, this is plus three. Dust house shielding. Uh, Aki has devised upgrades that will protect the dust houses from both flux and their slow decay. She needs you to implement them. Okay, so we can do both. Which is good, I'm an intuition and engineer. Uh, preservation. If the dust houses are too... Um, uh, to preserve their closest biome, they will need shielding against the flux and protection from their slow decay. We shall do this. Let's... Uh, I mean, that's gonna be done pretty fast. Let's check up on this shit and what's gonna happen here. I don't know what unwelcome aid is. Let's see how much we get kicked, uh, our face kicked in. There, it's the same. Docking access. There is a loose crowd around the supplies you have unloaded, and a tense mood brewing among them. You sit ne nearby on the edge of the shuttle's docking tunnel, resting. Further away, crews from Ember's Song continue their lives as usual, coming and going, trading, discussing. There is a quiet efficiency to the hub, set up as a common space for the swarm of small ships from Ember's Song that are part of the flotilla. Unlike, Har unlike Hart or Step, there is no one capital ship for this moon's refugees, just, just a mess of individuals traveling in concert. Oh, so just like a hub and then all of these ships are there, and that's them. We told Hart we didn't want their scraps. The jeering voice comes out of the small crowd nearby. Uh, is this supposed to be Peter or Peter? I, I think it's gonna be Peter. Steely Ember Song refugee. You turn to see a gaunt, pale man wearing the industrial work gear you have seen many of the Song refugees wearing. You hear me? These supplies are to help. He smirks. Oh, how noble of you, coming out here to help us singers. There is a rumble of anger around the crowd. We agreed to join the flotilla for joint protection. We did not agree to uh, Ember's heart using the flotilla to secure their control of the moons. You realize Peter is addressing the crowd as much as he's addressing you. With the cordon down, our crews are more than able to acquire what is needed from the eye, but is owed as restitution for keeping us restrained. He pats one of the crates you unloaded. What we need, we will take. I have no stake in this. Okay, so this is crucial. So I either tell him that Sol is working on this, or I just bow out. So as I as I did not tell uh, Aki that I'm working for Sol, I'm not gonna tell this guy. I have no stake in this. Then why are you delivering supplies for Hart, Peter Lass? You need to check your alliances, sleeper. Peter looks around at the crowd. Hart think they can buy us, but we remember the past. A rumble of agreement runs through the crowd. He smiles at them. Take the supplies if you wish, of course. We are not wasteful. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Peter approaches you directly. The crowd tentatively moves forward, and by the time he reaches you, they are already dragging away crates and distributing the contents. Yeah. I'm not one for shooting the messenger sleeper, says Peter as he approaches, but we cannot concede to Hart here, not for a moment. Uh, I don't understand. I can see that, Peter sits beside you on the docking tunnel slip. What was your plan, sleeper? Unload supplies? Okay, I'm gonna maybe change his voice a little bit. Unload supplies? No, 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 I just keep it like this. Uh, supplies and wait for someone to start throwing them back at you? He nods at the crowd, rifling through the crate. Because that's what was about to happen. Not sure about... Not sure about that. Uh... So I should thank you? Peter bows a little. My pleasure. What do you think happened to the crew of this shuttle? He shakes his head. They were chased out of this place. What is happening here? Why do they hate Hart? We, Peter says with emphasis, do not hate Hart. We simply do not trust them. Do you know anything about Ember's moons, Slipper? Or were you planning to wander into this flotilla totally blind and objective outsider offering help? He rolls his eyes. Um, educate me then? He smiles. It would be my pleasure. 
I'm going to assume you know the basics. The gas giant Ember has seven moves. The three biggest are Ember's Step, Ember's Song, and Ember's Heart. Keywings. We can cover the four sisters next session. Step was the first to be settled. A contract old Solheim gave to the Terraformer Cybel systems when they first claimed the Helion system. That's way back when. Step was a testing round, and like most testing rounds, it didn't turn out too well. A partial Atmos field slowly slugging off each orbit, a dysfunctional ecosystem, and a whole load of dust clogged settlers. This place is a miserable desert long past its best before date. So Sabel moved on to Heart, where they redoubled their efforts. The subsurface ocean and some balmy tidal heating helped. I hope that was correct. Allowing them to build a real atmosphere, a real habitable world, a fact that the typical hard colonist won't ever let you forget. How did Cybele achieve such a thing, you might wonder? Well, that's where we come in. It's where that same old rule of surrogacy the one humanity built our universe around. Peter claps a hand to his chest in mock pride. My moon! My moon! Ember's song is a sulfur-soaked rock covered in volcanoes Tidally heated by its inner orbit to swelling temperatures, exactly the kind of crucible you need to fuel a terraforming project. Energy under industry fuel, Song provided the raw materials for heart. Peter grimaces willingly or not. And the crucible requires people to run it. Us, singers, born into a flaming pit and asked to stoke it so others might live in a paradise in the making. That's what we had to endure, until Solheim brought everything down. Peter rattles off his uh, speech from memory, and you wonder how many times he has delivered it. Probably a lot. No, Solheim, no contract, no contract, no Cybele, and no Cybele means three moons suddenly independent. Peter shakes his head. It was a war, sleeper. Sometimes hot, sometimes cold. And unsurprisingly, Hart and Step came out of it better than us. Yet, Peter holds up a hand, they need us, Slipper, always have, and so we are the linchpin, we are the center around which the moon orbit, not swirling amber. We've resisted takeovers, sieges, and expansions, and now we'll resist this. Half the people on this ship think flux was caused by heart, intentionally or otherwise. And I have to say, some cycles I agree. So before you come here and hand out supplies like a good soldier, maybe educate yourself. What does that matter? But you abandoned the song. Peter bristles. I want you to imagine what it is like to try to live on an airless volcanic rock when every system uh, that sustains you starts shutting down. He spits and wipes a sleeve across his mouth. We abandoned nothing. Some stayed, others left. But we will reclaim Amber as soon as the flux fades and ends. We've weathered worse. Don't you need don't you need supplies? Oh, this is well. This is gonna make him angry, probably. The don't you need supplies is maybe gonna make him angry. So I'm gonna just say understand. Do you now, Peter? Meets your eyes. Well, perhaps you'll stop running errands for heart then. I want to keep you from the docking axis, sleeper. No one here has the authority for that. But watch your step here. Try to remember that the I is just another in the long list of people who have tried to control us. I understand. Then let it guide your actions. Look, we are many, and we have many needs. Ships come to this docking axis for repairs, for acquisitions, for friendship. We can provide these, as well as any singer. If you want to help, Help uh, in your own name, Sleeper, not in that of heart. Peter shakes his head. Carry that name here and you will lose all trust. Yes, th this is what I figured. I need to do this as, as me, as, as a Sleeper, not as a member of Sol's compatriot. And then I will, you know, help them all, probably. Be as we are, act in your own name alone. Peter puts a hand on your shoulder and stands. I hope I didn't waste uh, my time here, Sleeper. And with that, he walks away, back to the shrink uh, shrinking crowd that is distributing the last of the supplies amongst those present. 
Watch them pass the food and water between them. No signs of com conflict between them. The crews just a careful distribution of resources. Peter chats with a few crews, each of them casting looks in your direction. Ones that reveal little about the singer's intentions. You stand. It seems the tensions on the flotilla run much deeper than you expected. This won't be easy. This won't be fucking easy. Uh, what do we have? Uh, supply spores. One of the ship is trying to establish a mushroom farm to help uh, feed the crews. They are looking. This is definitely end game content. Jesus fuck, I'm, I'm mistaken. Um, spores to get them started. Okay. As Peter said, the singers will only trust you if you act in the penalty of heart. Filling supply requests is a good start. Uh, one of the sleeper uh, si uh, singer crews is looking for a ship mine to replace the flux damage to core. Well, I have all of that, uh, but I don't know in which moment I should do what. Uh, so yeah, and this is easy. So let me try this. Uh, Mashies. I hope this is like a one-time thing. Yep, the spores have been seeded, and while some may be suspicious of your efforts, crew by crew you'll convince them. Yes, I will. The thing I have another one of these. I have a lot of things stockpiled. And I'm gonna probably need to stockpile a lot more. You supply the ship mine, but in a way it seems to only make the crew more suspicious of you. Wow. Fucking assholes. Well, let's see what happens next. As you cross the axis, looking for a shuttle to take uh, you back to the ruined cordon, you spot Peter, standing at the edge of the central hub. Something about the way he is leaning against the rail, looking down across the axis and towards the blinking lights of the flotilla, beyond makes you pause. He is completely still, his head drooping low and his shoulders hunched high. Approach him, of course. You lean on the railing a little way from Peter, leaving a gap between you. This close you can see the blank stare in his eyes, the way his hands hang limply in front of him. He takes a minute to notice you. Slipper, he inhales sharply. Still hanging around? Are you okay? Peter pauses. Not really, no. Peter closes his eyes. He can feel his mind veering, the thoughts refusing to be still. You know, Slipper, he says without opening his eyes. No one asked you to come here, he clenches his jaw. So why don't you just get lost? He looks directly at you, his stare a challenge. What's with you? Peter stands back from the rain. Who invited you, sleeper? Who said you could come here? You think because the Carters decided to name you their errand boy, we have to put up with you? We don't want you here. We don't need you. His eyes burn with rage. Go home, you stupid machine. I'm not gonna yell that much, but yeah, I'm gonna... Yeah, yeah. Uh, fuck you, asshole. I gave you a ship mine and mushrooms to, so you can survive, asshole. A second after he shouts that final line, he collapses in on himself, staying upright but all the energy going out of his body. He slumps back against the railing, his eyes closed once more. You wait. After a while he speaks. I'm tired, sleeper. Tired of everything. I'm tired of empty paternalism of the heart. I'm tired of the paranoid whining of the crews. I'm tired of endless cycles that look the same, smell the same, feel the same. I'm tired of running, of hiding, of fixing every shitty thing that breaks out here. His shout echoes all a little, uh, echoes a little in the hub, but few stop to look. He looks down at his feet. I'm fucking like, it's, don't take it out on me. No, no, no. Everyone is tired. No, no, no. I get it. I'm a fucking sleeper. I'm fixing every fucking thing on the eye. I fixed the eye. I fixed your ships. I fixed the dust bolts. I'm fixing everything. Dude, I'm a fucking tireless machine that's just fixing everything and I just want to live and be with Lemon Mina and chill out. So shut the fuck up, please. Anyway, I get it. Peter nods. I'm sorry, sleeper. He sighs. Something is... I don't feel okay. Just tired, I think. Really tired. He stands. I'm going to go. He looks at you and sniffs. Get some sleep. Sleep well. Peter nods slowly, turning away. He raises a hand and 
drifts away towards the center of the hub. You turn back to the railing, not wanting to watch him go. Seeing him like this, you prefer not to stare. The traffic of the axis rumbles on as you watch under the endlessly shining sun. The same air recycled through all these lungs, the same dust gathering speck by speck on the windows. You take a sharp breath, stand straight and get moving, before the inertia of it all gets to you too. Okay, what do we do next? Okay, Axis Assistance, Axis Job uh, job Board, the Axis houses an overflowing job board of engineering tasks uh, requested by the crews, you can help out there, I'm a perfect engineer. Uh, crew Socializing, wow I lose guy, oh, fuck no, I lose energy, That and this gives me actually more than that. The Axis uh, is a much a social hub as it is a supply hub, keeping good relations with the crews will help them, uh, yeah trust me, there's so much work. The more work you do for the singers, the more you get to know the crews, the more they will trust you. Okay, so we have work done there and we have work done here, uh, which is a lot. Uh, we have a six. Uh, I don't know what should I do with it. Like, I'm, I mean, I'm losing some. Okay, let me check the aviary. Yeah. I mean, I'm losing some uh, stuff. Which is an issue, but I'm also good. Let me just get some ashes. I might need those. Uh, let's go chill. Like th there's a lot of work to be done, and I have no idea when the flux thing is gonna do its thing, so I need to end the cycle and we can continue on. But as for the mushrooms go, I can cook. I, I'm, I'm not gonna sunbathe that basically waste of dice, so I'm just gonna cook that, uh, eat the cat, I'm good and stable, the dice are decent, Bayantan, come on, let's get to some cooking, Tala, uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, Tala, let's get to some nice cooking, drinking, it's like, I start my day, I go here, I meet her, I do some cooking, uh, no, I don't do it's cool that there are some like repeatable things that like just happen and are there. The sad thing is I'm not like ascending to the hub for anything. There's absolutely nothing here. Like if they added some new stuff, maybe, or like go to Bliss's Bay and do some stuff. This is just like just for money's sake. I'm not completing anything, which may be good, maybe bad. I don't know. That's important. Do I have something here? Oh yeah, I can get a lot of cry of that, Matsutake, and by Shipman Core I got one, so that's all good. Like, this could be a nice live service game. Oh uh, fuck, why did I say that? Not, not li uh, live service, but you know, stuff that you can do in this. This, this, this can be a long, long ass game. So we have two of these done. Uh, I can complete this anytime, and I might... And it probably should because who knows what's gonna be the next step of this. So let's let's give them the Matsutake. These are rare, so maybe they're not expecting me to complete it but right now. Uh, those working in the canteen, they're very grateful. Soul finds you deep in the layers of the pilgrim sea, working on a patch for a life support went. You hear him coming, his suit hisses as he does. I had to ask around to find you, he smiled. Seems you know the place better than me these days. Doubt it. So not. I was on the work crew that built this thing, so maybe you are right, Kewings. Sol holds out a hand. Stand up. Let me see you. He pulls you to your feet. I don't believe we ever had a sleeper on Ember's heart. Sol looks you up and down. You sure make me wish we had. Could have done with a few workers as good as you. Thank you. Sol nods. You're welcome. Seem like I uh, owe you some answers. Seeing as you've been working hard on the Pilgrim Sea these past cycles. Well, I just brought you mushrooms. He leans against the crate. He's still creaking. What do you want to know? Well, let's go with Amber's heart. First. Sure. He smiles. I mean... I spent my whole life on that rock, so I have plenty to tell. 
I've, I'll save you uh, my life story for another time, Kimings. But the short of it is that Heart is the first of Ember's moons, the biggest and the most populated, which is down to the successful terraforming system Cybell set up when Solheim owned the system. How are relations with the other moons? Sol smiles. Depends who you've been talking to. You shouldn't mistake me for a politician, Sleeper. That's for others to do. Gives you a look. But Ember Step was a test ground for the terraforming tech that Hart is built on, while Song was the extraction site for the raw materials and energy needed to make it work. You can imagine that might lead to some tension. However, Saul holds up a hand. Despite what people might say, Hart was never fully stable. Saul shakes his head. Sibel liked to talk it up, but after they pulled out, the, uh, pulled out and Solheim left, our people discovered they'd have to keep the systems running themselves, or the place would soon end up as dry and as dead. Hart was uh, good as long as the evaporators kept running, kept filling our skies with clouds, even after the collapse our people kept those things going, turning that subsurface ocean into a periwinkle blue sky. Soul smiles. Flux ended that, though, and when they failed, the rains failed, and the harvest with it. Soul pauses. And soon, you have a city without a way to feed itself. Soul shudders. That's when we, well, some of us, made the decision to set out on this place. He gestures at the pilgrim seed, and look for another future. Soul shifts on his crate. Anything else you wanted to ask? Uh, there was something. Sol nods. What do you want to know? About you. Sol squints at you. You want to know about me? But I'm not sure what that was part of the deal I was thinking of, Sleeper. Unless you're asking about this. He wraps out the metal of his suit. In case you haven't guessed, this is the only thing keeping me vertical. He adjusts a shoulder piece. It's a lifter suit, made for working the fields. We had to modify it so I could walk around after the accident. And that's all I'm saying, Slipper. Because, to be honest with you, I don't owe you more than that. You want to know about the Flux, about Ember's Heart? Go ahead. But don't pry into my life and I won't pry into yours. So let's the silence sit, staring hard at the floor. The suit seems to loom over him, looking more like a burden than a sport. With the bars around his head, you suddenly start to think of it as a cage. Look, I don't mean to be rude. Let's leave it there. There is too many eyes on me on this ship as it is, and I'd rather just slip into the background. Thank you very much. Soul shifts on the crate. Anything else you wanted to ask? Uh, there was something. Uh, what do you want to do? The flux. Saul sighs. That's what I imagined. Well, I asked you about other things. Jesus, you don't need to be that mean. Uh, he scratches at his beard. I can't say I am an expert, but I can tell you what we witnessed on the heart. At first, we ignored it. A few farms had their automation systems blink out, lifter suits locked up, bots reset their schedules, nothing we hadn't seen before. But then the news came out of uh, Paserao that they'd been hit harder. The local network had gone down and no one could get it, uh, get it back up. It was rough for a while, but out in the farmland, we were used to that. Paserao? Capital of Heart. Tens of thousands of souls made it their home. Soul Genesis. Anyway, we thought the Flux was a freak event until the day they got the network running again. That's when the cascade happened. System after system corrupted, data lost, and then another flux hit, and another. The bots were running circles in the fields. People had to be cut out of lifter suits like mine. And the city? I never saw it, but I heard from others. Soul shivers. It only got worse from there. We couldn't seem to fight it. It cut us right open. That's what I know about flux. Some folks say it came from the inner systems, that it might be connected to some old tech there or something, but I never heard anything more than rumors. Soul scratches their beard. Sorry, I don't have better news. 
throw shit in the crate. Anything else you want to ask? Maybe there was something uh, soul nods. What do you want to know about? Something buzzes on Sol's suit. He glances it, uh, at it and frowns. Look, it looks like time is up, Slipper. Sol stands flexing against the suit. He takes his cane in his hand. Keep it up, Slipper. He smiles as he leaves. You're making me think I need to start making new plans for this place. With that, Sol leaves, and you wonder what he means. As he creaks away down the corridor, you can't help but feel there is more to him than it seems. I'm not going with you as uh, asses, like assholes, whatever. I'm not going with you. I'm staying on the eye. Fuck that. Fuck you. Uh, anyway, uh, step song and heart. Stability in the pupilla means relieving the pressure of the refugees from all three moons. Okay, so I've revealed them. Let's really believe uh, others. Uh, have G. These are not that great. So, up so yeah. Uh, yeah, I need to start working. I definitely need to start working. So, preservation done. Yeah, what is that? Do they, they have a plus two or three? Uh, yeah, this is risky. I'll do it once. I want to do it once. Oh, I, I need to read this. You were taken under the wing of a righteous crew who gave you. Wait, what did they get plus two? Energy? Uh, of a righteous crew who gave you a song brood spirit that burns like fire and leaves a lasting buzz. Okay, I'm getting drunk. Let's get this done. That's uh, job, war. Just one. You take on a bad job that has been on uh, the board for ages. And clear it. Quickly. You are very pleased. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna try and keep it equal as much as I can. Let's try this. Yeah, try and help. You work inside the dust house, layering the internal walls with careful plating. The rattle of dust becomes a comforting backdrop. Reload. Fuck. Okay, I'll go hack something. Like with the plus two, it's absolutely useless to do anything. Like, uh, like plus two. Like with the two, useless. Three, maybe something. Like maybe you can get something out of it. But with the two, no. This is at least I can do something about this. Get some cash or something. Anyway, that's another cycle. Let's go. Did they feed the cat? I think I fed a cat. Now it's just gonna be grind, and I need to try and keep everything in balance out. And I'll definitely need to go once or twice to hunt for some scraps because the ships are gone. So, my energy is good, the ships are still not arriving, this one is gone. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely go at least once in the scrapyard. Hunting down the waves. I don't think you're gonna get more than one, but that's good enough. Okay, the flux thing is gonna happen at some point, I need to be wary about that. But I think I can complete it before that. Do this. Uh, I don't wanna get just plus. Well, ah, oh, god, I'm gonna need to waste a lot of cash. Access assistance. Yay! Take a handful of jobs. And work through them, sharing tips and chatting with crews. You can feel them warming up. Okay, how many cycles? Three more cycles. I think I can complete both before uh, that happens. In case that triggers like a timed event for the next flux, which I do believe it's gonna happen. I do believe that's gonna be a thing. Cycle. 